Hello, everybody. Welcome to Experience Jesus with AVJ Apostle Victor James. I'm excited and I give thanks to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus for giving us the opportunity, another opportunity to be able to fellowship together and break the bread of life together. Now, you and I know that regularly on this channel, the bread of life we break is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Now, two quick announcements. Number one, uh, I would love for you to follow me on TikTok, uh, Apostle Victor James, on Instagram, Apostle Victor James, and uh, of course, on YouTube, Apostle Victor James. We have lots of teachings right there that will be a blessing to you and your family. Amen. All right, so tell somebody about it as well. All right? Okay, second announcement. By the grace of God, I pastor right now a mentorship fellowship uh, that the Lord has called me into to raise men and women in the knowledge of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we meet every two Sundays in a month by 3 p.m. at number 62 Oluagbebe Street, um, Olugufe Bus Stop, Akumojo, right here in Lagos. That's around Shasha area. All right? Um, so that's that. Let's hit the ground running real quick because I'm excited at what we're going to be looking at, the bread we're going to be breaking. You know, um, I want to I want us to look at our lives or our life singular as a person, which is Christ, because that's what the Bible said. It said Christ is your life. So if you are born again, the life we have is Christ Jesus. Our life is a person, and His name is Jesus. And we say that without apology to anybody. You know, unfortunately. That is against the devil. That is to the devil's ad, um, uh, uh, disadvantage. All right. Jesus Christ is our life. The Bible said in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, he said, I am crucified with Christ. That's by identification. The day I, accept, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, he said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. He said, therefore, the life which I now live in the faith, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loves me and gave himself for me. Glory be to God. You see, so this life that we have, which is Jesus Christ, you know, that God has given to us. Thank you, precious Father. You see, the life of God is not a thing. The life of God is a person. So once you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you have accepted the life of God. Are you seeing that? All right. You see, but the challenge is that, unfortunately, when somebody becomes born again, you know, or at the point where they're supposed to be born again, we preach the gospel of Christ to them. We tell them about Jesus Christ, and they accept Jesus as their personal lord and savior because right now if you're not born again you can do it it's very simple jesus loves you god has paid the price already for your salvation all you have to do is call upon the name of jesus the bible said whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved and what that means is that just confess with your mouth that jesus christ is lord and you will need to believe with your heart that god even though jesus died for our sins god raised him from the dead don't say father Almighty God, I confess with my mouth that Jesus died for me and that he is Lord. And I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead for the forgiveness of my sins, for me to be justified. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Wash me with your blood. If you said that meaningfully, you are born again. And the Spirit of God will bear witness with your spirit as you continue in this life which is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, when a person becomes born again, like I said, the next thing, unfortunately, in most of our churches, you know, I'm speaking generally now, in most of our churches, unfortunately, the thing we begin to do is that we now begin to teach them how to live this life in Christ through the eye, through the eyes of the Old Testament saints. And then it gets to a point, the believer that is born again, that has come to salvation through Christ Jesus, and is enjoying that life, begin to struggle. We begin to go through stress. 
Christianity more or less becomes a burden to them. You, you know why? Because the Bible said very clearly, he said, justification can never be attained by the, by, by the law. You know, the law makes nothing perfect. So when we return the people back to the Old Testament characters, Old Testament saints, beautiful people, godly men and women, David, Solomon, uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Ezekiah, you, you know, uh, uh, Moses, they are great people. You see, but if we now make them the standard, the picture, image for a born-again Christian, that born-again Christian eventually will slip into a life of burden, stress, and sometimes discouragement. But that's why he said that in so many churches, in the heart of so many Christians, they are frustrated. You know, but just for the fear of God, that's why people are continuing. And they can't voice their opinion. They can't voice their frustration and stress concerning Christianity. Are you seeing that? But once we can take your eyes back to Jesus, that you accepted to have this life, you will see that your life will begin to go in the direction, direction that God intended for you. That's what the Bible said in 1 John in chapter 4. He said God's idea is that we should live this life that he has given to us in Christ Jesus through the same Christ Jesus. Are you seeing that? This is God's idea. I think in verse 19, 1 John chapter 4 verse 19. I didn't plan to use that before, but I guess we need to just look at it. 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. It's there. It's very clear. You know. He said, uh, no, no, I think uh, if it's not verse 19, I think it's verse 17 or so. I can't really, you know. But he said, God's idea, he said, this is the love of God. This is how God demonstrated his love towards us. That once we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that we are not born again, he wants us to still live our lives through Christ, through Jesus. He wants us to live through him. We should, do not, we should not live our life independent of the same Jesus that we received to be born again. Are you getting it? You know, so the error, the mistake a lot of our ministers behind the pulpit make is that when somebody becomes born again, to get the person to develop, to grow in the knowledge of this new life that we have, which is Jesus Christ, they keep taking them back to the Old Testament. They keep showing them the examples of the Old Testament characters, heroes. They are beautiful people, like I said, but they are not the focus of the, vict uh, the, uh, of the life that we have in Christ. They are not. The Bible said to look unto Jesus. That's what it said, to look for you to actually live a grace-filled life in this new life of Christianity. You have to look to Jesus. Look at it. In 1 John chapter 4 verse 9. He said, like I was trying to say. He said, in this was manifested the love of God towards us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world. That we might live through him. You, you can't change God's mind. God's purpose. God's idea. God's plan. God's plan for you and I. Is that we should live through Jesus. We shouldn't live through Moses. We shouldn't live through David. We shouldn't live through Joshua. We shouldn't live through Isaiah. We shouldn't live through any one of those people. They are great people. Beautiful people. But none of them died for us. Are you seeing that? And none of them is our life. And number three, none of them have what we have. Which is Jesus. Are you seeing that? Oh, glory be to God. They don't have Jesus. So they envy us. That we have Jesus. Alright. So watch this. Thank you Lord Jesus. Ooh. So I wrote here. I said in order. Or before I even read this. If you make living your Christian life. Just by. Reading the Old Testament. Which there is nothing wrong with. There is nothing wrong with reading the Old Testament. I don't want anybody to. Quote me out of context. Do not quote. Don't say what I didn't say. I didn't say that reading the Old Testament is wrong. That I never said that. 
you know, so, uh, some people just have a way of um, hearing something else when you are saying something else, you know. So I never said that you shouldn't read the Old Testament. But what I'm saying is that you cannot get a clear picture, knowledge, and understanding of this new life that we have, which is Christ Jesus. You can't get it in the Old Testament, reading the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament, according to me, the primary function of the Old Testament is to house the prophetic promises for Christ that was to come. Are you seeing that? The primary function of the Old Testament, you know, was to house the prophetic promises concerning Christ. Take for example in Isaiah 53. He said from verse 5. He said he was wounded for our transgression. Bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was placed upon Jesus. And with his stripes we are healed. You see, those are prophetic promises that were made concerning Christ. Concerning Jesus. Are you seeing that? You know, in Psalm 91, I guess in verse 16, he said very clearly. He said, with long life will I satisfy him. And show him my salvation. You see, that is not that word or that verse is not for you and I, it's for Christ. Are you seeing that? God said, and I, actually, the word long life there means length of days. With length of days, I will fulfill the number of days he's supposed to live on earth to carry out his assignment. So it was a promise that God made to Christ. Are you seeing that in the book of Psalms? He said, and if eventually I will show him my deliverance, my resurrection. I will raise him back to life. Are you seeing that? And Christ Jesus embodied all of those promises in fulfillment. He fulfilled all of the promises you can find concerning God, God's word. From Genesis all the way to Malachi. Jesus fulfilled it. So 2 Corinthians chapter 1 now says in verse 20. He said all the promises of God are fulfilled in Christ. Glory be to God. So you see, to actually live this life that we have, which is Jesus Christ as Christians, Jesus has to be your focus. And how do you drive that positively? That's what I want us to see. Watch this. So, the best approach for any born-again Christian, yeah, your best approach, now that you are a Christian, and you have to live this life. It's an overcoming life. It's a victorious life. Jesus said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So it's a, a life of victory. Christianity is a life of victory. Glory be to God. It's an overcoming life. Regardless of the challenge. Regardless of your present circumstance or situation. So how do you approach living this life as God will have you live? Your first instant of thought should be the New Testament. Go after the New Testament. If you want to live as a Christian, I really want to live this life gloriously, successfully, with ease, stress-free. Let the New Testament become your focus of study. You know, I know as I said that, there are a lot of people say, ah, are you trying to say that we shouldn't read the other part of the Bible? I didn't say that. But I said, if you want to live this Christian life and live it victoriously, triumphantly, regardless of your condition, your challenge, your situation, your location, your New Testament should be your approach, your, your desire. You need to study it. That's why concerning us ministers, the Bible said that God made us able ministers of the New Testament. Woo! You can't approach the New Testament and get the juice of this new life out without being enabled by God. But before I even get them, now, remember what I said. The best approach to live victoriously, triumphantly as a born-again Christian is the New Testament. Go for the New Testament. You will come out better. Why do I say so? In Luke 22, verse 20, this is Jesus talking in the book of Luke 22, verse 20. 
Watch what Jesus said. Luke chapter 22, verse 20. Let's do it quickly. He said, likewise. Now, Jesus is in the upper room with his disciples. They went in there to, uh, to observe the Passover. As soon as they finished taking the Passover, or observing the Passover, Jesus changed the idea of their gathering there to himself or about himself. And a new covenant, which is, which is what we call the New Testament, that was coming into being, into play, into existence. So G the Bible said, likewise also, Jesus took after, uh, likewise also the cup, after the supper, after the Passover experience that he had with his disciples. Jesus now took the same cup that was on the table there. He took it. Saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Glory be to God. This is the end of discussion, man. This is where the discussion is. I mean, this is where the discussion ends. He said, this cup, Jesus took the cup. He said, this cup is the New Testament inside my blood. That means the New Testament cannot function beyond the blood of Jesus. You see, in the Old Testament... The functionalities of the Old Testament is very clear. It is based on the provisions on, of animal sacrifice. The blood that was shed by animals. So, the things you read in the Old Testament are powered or limited to what the blood of an animal can provide. Are you seeing that? So Jesus not changed. He said, look, there's a new testament now. There's a new covenant. Glory be to God. He said, but this new testament will function according to the provision of my blood, of Jesus' blood. So the new testament cannot operate beyond the blood of Jesus. Look. <laughs> Don't you get it? One of the first things you should understand is that the Bible said the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So, which means the New Testament provides better things. Glory be to God. The New Testament, that's why a lot of people run from the New Testament. You can't, you can't stay in the New Testament and preach generational curse. It's not possible. Because the New Testament must function, must operate within the provisions of the blood. And guess the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood that is always speaking better things than the blood of Abel. And you know in the blood of Jesus is redemption. So you can't preach generational sin, I mean generational curse from the New Testament. That's why everybody preaching generational curse, go and look. They are always running from the New Testament. You can't find it. Because the blood of Jesus, the, I mean because the New Testament cannot give it, cannot teach it, cannot promise generational curse, cannot work generational curse. You know why? Because of the blood of Jesus. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins, glory be to God, the blood has negated that already. Thank you, precious Father. You can't preach, redeem your firstborn. You know, give money to redeem your, to, to buy your firstborn, or your lastborn, or your middleborn. Everybody preaching redemption for firstborn, or secondborn, or middleborn, or lastborn, go and look at them. They have to go, they have to jump back from the new testament into the old to go and borrow those things and those things they are borrowing from the old from the old testament are subject to the provisions of the blood of animals are you getting this so in the new testament you can't preach redeem your firstborn bring money bring one thousand dollars bring $5,000 to redeem your firstborn. Bring X, Y, Z sacrifice to redeem your lastborn. If you are a firstborn, you need to give something to free yourself from blah, 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 blah. These are not truth. These are false teachings that, that, that do not originate from the New Testament. Because Peter said in the book of 1 Peter, Woo! Hallelujah! He said, look, don't let anybody lie to you. Don't let anybody deceive you that you as a firstborn of your father or your mother or your family you need to give sacrifice do something to redeem yourself are you hearing what i'm saying is it because you are not redeemed by perishable things such as 
gold or silver. He said you were redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. That is the functionality of the New Testament. Ah, yeah. This is why I love to preach about Jesus. <laughs> Look, this will take market. It will spoil market for a lot of prophets, pastors, bishops, ministers. You know, this will spoil market for them. They, they are seeing this truth. But because they will not function within the provision of the New Testament, which is according to the blood of Jesus, and because it will not produce for them, you know, their expectations of money or gain, they go back into the Old Testament. And all those animal sacrifices, giving of this for your firstborn, giving of that for your life, it's a sign for Jesus. There were all types and shadows for Jesus. So when we came into Christianity, into Christ, the life we have in fulfillment is a fulfilled life. Are you seeing that? So, it is very clear. Anytime you hear a preaching or teaching or prophecy, or somebody prophesying or saying that because there are a lot of junk going on on social media. A lot of rubbish. A lot of nonsense going on on social media. Everybody is preaching whatever they want. At the detriment, you know, of the eternal provision of Jesus' salvation, redemption for mankind. Ah! Ashogada, Badayan Gada. Look, the New Testament cannot function beyond the provisions of the blood of Jesus. If it, it <laughs> you know, as far as the New Testament is concerned, Jesus has paid the price for our sins. You can't find that in the Old Testament. No, you can't. I'm telling you, you know. And when some ministers want to keep themselves perpetually in control, to keep controlling Christians, that's why you see that they always go back to Old Testament to look for obscure, fearful, scary scriptures in the Old Testament to intimidate the church. See, the, the, the Old Testament is very simple. Just if you can have at the back of your mind, that it is all about a prophetic, the prophetic promise made to Christ or about Christ. You would, that will settle the whole thing about the Old Testament concerning you. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So, finally, let me say this as well. Because of the blood of Jesus, yeah, whatever you read in the Old Testament as God's judgment, you know, God's punishment, God's uh, 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 um, negative thought, the negative thing, you know, so, so to speak, quote and unquote, you know, you should know that those judgment, those things, you know, do not go beyond the Old Testament. You should understand that. I'll give you an example, you know. Um, I'm sure you have heard of uh, preachings, you know, about David and Goliath. You know, I'm sure every, all, we all know about David and Goliath. You know, David said, to, David said to Goliath, these uncircumcised Philistines. You see, because circumcision was for the Jews as a sign of God's people. Circumcision was for them, you know. And then Goliath was not circumcised physically. Because the circumcision for the Jews were physical circumcision as a sign of covenant between them and God. Are you seeing that? You see, but in the New Testament, glory be to God in heaven. <laughs> there is another circumcision because of the blood of Jesus. And the circumcision we have in Christ is of the heart, not of the flesh. Not of circumcising our physical body. No, it's of the heart. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God, through the blood of Jesus, purge your heart, your conscience. You are purged. You are not only purged. Jesus, according to Revelation chapter 1, from verse 5 to 8, 
wash you with the blood. He dips you into his blood and washes you. You become washed. You come out on the other side. A saint. So right now, Christianity, the life, this life we have in Christ Jesus, that is called Christianity, is powered by knowledge in two folds. Faith and love. Ooh, about a good yaga. Faith and love. Now, before I get, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but let me just say this first of all. To, to get a clear understanding of the picture or the life, yeah, of the or the provision of the New Testament, which is which was made possible by the blood of Jesus. To get a clear understanding of it. And then for it to become a knowledge to you. Yeah. The New Testament for you, that you should read does not necessarily is not necessarily about Matthew, Mark, Luke. Now I didn't say you shouldn't read Matthew, Mark, Luke. You know. You see, Matthew, Mark, the book of the books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke are historical evidence or eyewitness of those disciples, those men. What they saw Jesus, you know, did in, in Jerusalem physically, you know, when they followed Jesus. That's what they wrote. Are you seeing that? They were not actually writing the New Testament life about the New Testament life. You know why? The New Testament life had not started. It has not started. It started when Jesus resurrected. The New Testament came into effect. Jesus shed his blood, you know, on the cross. When he died and resurrected, the New Testament came into effect. You see, there is no testament unless there is the death of the testator. You can't say there is a testament a covenant or um, uh, how do they put it again <clears throat> he said this is my will that I'm living for my children you know <clears throat> that will cannot come into effect until the one that willed it dies are you seeing that then the will will come into effect the same thing with the new testament old testament was actively available until Jesus went to the cross, shed his blood, and died. Are you seeing that? So, as he died, a new testament by the blood of Jesus came forth. So, Jesus rose from the dead. God raised him from the dead. For this new testament that Jesus died for to become a reality. So, now, Jesus, I mean, now the new testament is a reality. Because the death of a testator has taken place. Are you seeing that? All right. Not so. How how do we now know the revelation of this New Testament? Like I said, you can't find the revelation of the New Testament in the book of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Those those books were historical eyewitness of Jesus's physical existence. And all his activities <clears throat> that he, he went through for us in the city of Jerusalem or in, in Israel. All right. So now that Jesus is resurrected and the New Testament is set into play, we need to come into the revelation of the New Testament. How? Watch this. In Romans chapter 1. Paul writing to the church at Rome. He wrote from, you know, I'm going to read from verse 16 and 17. Watch this. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. In verse 16, Paul said, no, put NLT translation for me. Watch you. In verse 16, for you to come into the revelation of the New Testament. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, of the good news, of the good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes the Jews first, and also the Gentiles. 
So when the Jews, even the Jews themselves, believe they come into the knowledge of the gospel of Christ, they too will become saved. Remember, they have they are the ones that have the covenant of the Old Testament. Yet they have to cross into the New Testament to be saved by accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. <laughs> so if the Jews need to cross into the New Testament to be saved, how much more you and I? So what are you going back into where the Jews are coming out from? So watch this. Verse 17 now says, Glory be to God. I love to preach about Jesus. <laughs> Is it? Or maybe, let me look, let me do NIV translation. From that verse 16, NIV translation says, He said, Ooh, I love this. He said, For the, no, yeah. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the, what is the gospel? The gospel is the message about Jesus Christ. That's the simple definition about the gospel. The gospel is good news. The good news message about Jesus. All right? So Paul said, I am not ashamed of the good news, the message about Jesus Christ. Because it is the power, it is the power of God for salvation of everyone who believes. First, for the Jew. Then, for the Gentiles. Oh, hallelujah. See Bible. Now, verse 17 says, load me with verse 17. Agadabada. Verse 17 says, for the gospel, the good news, message about Jesus, the gospel, for the gospel, for, I mean, for in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed. Are you seeing it? So, that means, it is in the gospel, the revelation of the New Testament. The New Testament life is revealed. The New Testament life is not revealed in any of the books of the Old Testament. From Genesis to Malachi, the New Testament life is not revealed. They were there concealed. They were not revealed. Are you seeing, are you seeing that? Alright. He said, a righteousness that is by faith from start to last. Just as it is written, the just or the righteous will live by faith. Okay. This is where I'm going. Since the revelation of the New Testament is made revealed in the gospel, the message about Jesus. I wrote something here that I like to read to everybody. I'm sure you are getting something. Ooh, I got to rush. My time is my time is really really fast spent. Because what Paul gave both Paul, Peter, James, um, um, no, 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 Jude, you know, Paul, Peter, James, Jude, what they gave to people, the Christians, the early Christians, that is passed down to us, yeah, were what we call the epistles. Letters, the letters, the epistles. In those epistles are the revelations of the gospel, the message about Jesus Christ, as it concerns the New Testament. Are you getting it? They wrote letters, epistles, letters. Inside those epistles, inside those letters, the book of Romans, uh, which book again? First Corinthians, Second Corinthians. First Timothy, Second Timothy, Thessalonians, you know, the book of James, the book of Jude, you know, all those books, the book of John, First John, Second John, Third John, all those letters, epistles, inside them are the true revelation of the New Testament life. God. Are you getting this? Now, watch this. How do I know that the epistles are the container? They are the containers of the revelation of the gospel, the New Testament life. How do I know that? Watch this. I'm, not, I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures to you as I round up this thing. God punish ignorance. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15, watch you. In the King James Version. In second, for you to know, I'm not talking to you from my head. It's from the Bible. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15. Look at what Paul wrote to them. He wrote to the saints, the believers, Christians in Thessalonica. 
Paul writing to them, he said, Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Watch. Stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught. Whether by words, by word, or our epistles. So Paul said, the letters we wrote to you, the letter we wrote to you, which is what we call the epistle, or epistles. He says, stand fast in them. Hold them as a tradition. That means, let them dictate your pattern of thinking as a Christian now, as a New Testament Christian. So what should dictate my pattern of, Christ, of thinking as a Christian are the epistles. Because inside the epistles are the revelations of the gospel. The teachings, the good news about Jesus Christ. Woo, hallelujah! Are you getting it? Paul said, stand fast, hold as a tradition. Hold it as a tradition. The things that we wrote to you, the things that are written in the epistles, hold them as a tradition, as a culture, as a way to think. Let it develop into a pattern of how you think, how you approach life. Hallelujah. Now, it didn't stop there. Watch this. In 2 in Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 14, Paul, see, writing to the church at uh, Thessalonica, Christians, he wrote in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 14, he said, and if any man, and if any man obey not our word by this epistle, he said, note that man and keep no company with him. Avoid him, that he may be ashamed. If anybody, <clears throat> excuse me, goes into another book, goes to rely on another book, and neglects our epistles, the letter that we wrote to you, inside of it is contained the gospel, the revelation of the gospel, the message about Jesus Christ. He said, don't keep company with that man. Avoid him. Avoid the man or woman that is telling you, you need to learn to pray by 3 a.m. I mean 12 a.m., 3 a.m., 6 a.m. in order for God to hear you. That guy, that man of God, he's talking to you from another book. He's not speaking from the epistles. He's not speaking from the life of the New Testament. How do I know? In Galatians chapter 4, God punish ignorance. See Bible. Jesus, have mercy on me. <laughs> Are you seeing this thing? In, look at the epistle. In Galatians chapter 4, in verse 9, or from verse 9, look at this. Very clear. Paul is writing to the church at Galatia. He's writing to them in the epistles, in the letter, which we are not supposed to neglect. We must not abandon to go to another book. He said, but now, after that you have known God, or rather, are known of God, he said, I'll turn you again to weak and beggarly elements. Where until you desire to again to be in bondage. Verse, verse 9. I mean, verse 10. Watch verse 10. Let me read it out to you. Yeah, Bible, they shot me. See Bible. He said, you, you are observing days and months and times and years. He said, these are beggarly elements. These are the things they did in the Old Testament before Jesus came. It does not have impact at all in this, our Christianity. It does not. He said in verse 11, I am afraid of you. Paul said, I'm afraid of you. I'm afraid of you. Lest I have bestowed labor upon you. My labor on you is in vain. Oh God, I'm afraid of you. But you are going back into the thing you shouldn't go back into. Don't let anybody tell you, you until you pray by 12 midnight, 3 a.m. or 6 a.m. That, that is when God is going to hear you. Or that is when you are going to generate power. You have power and then you have encounter with God. Those are lies from the pit of hell. They are taking you, drawing you out of Christianity. Drawing you out of the provision of the blood of Jesus. Drawing you out of the New Testament. They are beginning to draw you back into the law, into works. Guess what? The result will be nothing but frustration and stress. That's why people are running about Elta Skelter looking for prophets. Somebody to prophesy to them. Because even though they are eating manna, God is sending leanness into their soul. 
They are eating manna. But he is sending, the almighty God is sending, sending leanness into their soul. You need to come back. You need to move out from there. Come back to Jesus. Come and learn about what true Christianity is all about. You don't have to pray by 12 midnight for God to hear you. As a matter of fact, any prayer you pray during the day that God will not hear and answer, he will not hear and answer it by 12 midnight. He won't. You can take that to the bank. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Look at the economic crisis all over the world, even in Nigeria. Look at the pressure people go through. Look, to live in Lagos, the city where I am, the stress of it is something else. If you live, if you live on the mainland in Lagos and you, you are working on the island, believe me, for you to get to work in the morning, you will have to wake up by 4 a.m. And you must not be at home by 5 a.m. Otherwise, the traffic will never allow you to make that day. You will never get to work on time. Never. And imagine if you work in the bank or you work in the hospital or you work at a place where you are supposed to be there when the, the office resume. Now, after the closing hour, in order for you to avoid the traffic and make it back home on time, you will have to leave the island between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. Eventually, you get home by 12 a.m. in the night. You want to shower or whatever you want to do, you know, whatever it is. And then you want to go to bed. Wake up again by 4 a.m. Now, that alone is a stress that is building, that is eventually going to become a major breakdown if you refuse to live the life of the New Testament. And then one pastor will now invite you or make it compulsory that you must be in night vigil. Who do you? Who bewitch you? Who sent you night vigil? What are you looking for? What exactly is the thing that Jesus did not do that you are looking for? What is it? It is time for Christians to begin to, we need to begin to tell our man of God, our men of God, our women of God, don't invite me to night vigil, I won't come. I need to sleep. God gives sleep to his beloved. Night vigil is not of God. If you want to do night, okay, let me say this. Because somebody will take that now and say, Apostle say night is not of God. Yes. Especially if you live in Lagos. Do you know the same men of God, the same people who do this night vigil in Lagos from 8 p.m. till the next day, 5 a.m.? They can't try it abroad. They can't try such night vigil in America. They can't try such night vigil even in UK. In UK, when they start night vigil, they probably start by what time? By 12, they've closed. Everybody go home. Because you have to go to work. If you don't go to work, <laughs> of course, you know what will happen now. It's not like here that I go, oh my God, my, my, my God, I should go for night vigil. That's why I woke up late. You don't do that abroad in a civilized society. You don't do that. What are you doing with night vigil in the first place? Look, let me tell you. As it is revealed in the epistles, as New Testament life pattern of living, two things, like I said before, and I'm going to close with that. Faith that expresses itself by love. Finish. That's the, that's the old essence of the New Testament. Faith that expresses itself by love. <laughs> God punish the devil. So, you must read the epistle. We must read it to you. You to read it to yourself. Read it to your family. In Colossians chapter 4 verse 16. 
Sharp, sharp. Colossians 4, 16. Watch this. God punish the devil. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 16, look at it. And when this epistle is read, Paul is writing to the church at Colossae. <laughs> He's telling Christians, what, not if, when. Because you must read it. When this letter, this epistle is read among you, you must read the epistle. Go back and read the epistles. Don't look. I made up my mind many, 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 many years ago as a young Christian. If you are not teaching from the epistles, I won't sit down and listen to you. I won't sit down and listen to you. I won't. I won't I'm, I'm not going to sit down and listen. You are teaching and you are telling me Moses was on the man. You know, there's one man of God. He says he's a prophet. And then he's trying to counter what, uh, what was said. You know, he, with vigor, go ask crowd there. He said, Don't mind some, <clears throat> some ministers. They say, Moses did not see God. When God said, You, you, you cannot see me, but you will see my back. M Mo so Moses saw God. Don't mind them. They don't know. You see, he is blind. As he was talking, I was feeling sorry for him. You know, he's publicly making a fool of himself because even a Christian like God's born, God born again yesterday that comes into the New Testament to know the truth. He will be laughing at him, that man of God. With all this, your years in ministry. You mean you still don't understand this simple part? You know? You see that simple aspect? You don't understand. Number one, you see, the book of Exodus was not written physically by Moses. It was not Moses that wrote it with his hand. You know? It was somebody else that wrote the book of Exodus. So, and both Moses and the person that wrote it were not born again. They were canna beans. Canna beans. And then this man of God is saying, Moses saw God, and so Moses was transformed to become a God. Look at rubbish. Utter nonsense. He's preaching, and, he's preaching his thought, his mind, and not the truth of the gospel. You, you know? So, the Holy Ghost now gave us a clear understanding by the revelations, by revelation rather, of what transpired right there on the mountain. Look, if Moses had seen God being a man, in physical body, in this physical flesh, if Moses had seen God, if Moses had seen God on that mountain, Moses would be senior to Jesus. Jesus will have to bow to Moses because he saw God first. So when Jesus showed up, glory be to God, abande telede, esu kalaba. In John 1, Jesus said, no man has seen God before. Bam. This is Almighty God speaking. He said, nobody has seen God before. Jesus, he said, so that's to tell you, this man of God that is blabbing and making noise, he's so, he's so, he's so a novice. He's so much a novice that I, I felt sorry for the congregation. A child pastoring children. You know? Jesus himself said it. No man has at any time has seen God except he who was in the bosom of the Father. He has seen God. The only person who has seen God is Jesus Christ. The only person. Can I even shock you? Even Lucifer, Satan, has not seen God before. He, has not, he didn't see him. They just know that there is this being. And then when you look at the throne, it's light. It's just light that cannot be approached onto. That's why the, the Lucifer could misbehave. That's why the other angels could misbehave. Because they can't see the person they are worshipping and serving. You see what I'm saying? But they could see from manifestation his, exist his existence. They could see things. Woo, glory be to God. They could see the expressions of God. <laughs> That's why eventually God decided to get a body for himself. Woo, and guess what the body is? Jesus is the body of God. Why we are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. No, no, let's leave that one for another day. Let me just round up this thing. Look, you need to cross and maintain your course as a pattern of thinking the New Testament. Don't be afraid. Fear is not guaranteed. There, there's, no, there's no where God wants to be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't live in fear. Faith and love. Stay in faith. Once you are in faith, the guarantee, the provision of the blood of Jesus in the New Testament is that once you are in faith, even if the thing was supposed to be negative, 
that you are in faith, God must honor it and make it positive. That's the beauty of the New Testament. <laughs> Jesus said it to him that believeth. Not some things. All things are possible. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You can still hear good news. I don't care how late, how late it looks like. How whatever the devil is doing, you know. That's why the devil hates faith. Because it's not the, the, the only person is not permitted to operate or live by faith is the devil. So the just according to the revelation of the New Testament, must live by faith. So the Bible said in 1 John in chapter 5, <laughs> in verse 1, it said, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. Anybody who believes that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God. Verse 4 now says, <laughs> look at verse 4. Once you, are, once you believe in Jesus Christ, he said you are born of God. So being born of God, verse 4 says, for whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. It doesn't matter what the situation is. That's the pattern, the provision of the blood of Jesus for the New Testament. It doesn't matter what is going on. It doesn't matter the circumstance. Don't worry yourself. Don't worry yourself. Once you are born of God, whatever is born of God, overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. That is the life of the New Testament for the just. Stay in faith. Stay in faith. Stay in faith. You see these challenges you are facing. This delay. This, this thing that looks like as if it's been delayed. This thing that looks as if uh, there's no way out. This thing that looks as if the, the devil wants to use it to mock you. James chapter 1 says from verse number 3. Put James chapter 1. It's very clear. Don't forget this. It is not about you. It is about this life that you have come to in Christ Jesus. Look, take it from verse 2. You know, very important. This life, whatever your condition right now, even if you are in your spiritual bed, you are going to be healed and get up from that place. In the name of Jesus. Whatever the circumstance, you are coming out of it in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, my brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptation, when you look as if there is delay, when you look as if there is no money, there is no food, there is no hope, there is no help, he said, count it as joy. Count it as joy. Why? Why do you need to count it as joy? Why do you need to count this negative thing that looks negative as joy? In verse 2, look at, I mean verse 3, he said, knowing this, you need to know. You need to have a knowing, a, a knowledge, a working knowledge that the trying of your faith, it is not the trying of your emotions. It is not the trying of your thinking. It is not the trying of where you live. It is not the trying of your name. But it's the trial of your faith. The devil will always want to test your faith. He will always want to try your faith. To prove that your faith is useless. Being in Jesus Christ. But the Bible says you need to know. You need to know that this thing is about the trial of faith. Yay! It's a, this life we have. We are overcomers. So what makes us overcomers is our faith in Jesus Christ. So what the devil is after is to test, to try, to frustrate, to cause us to take our faith from Jesus. But the devil is a liar. We die here. We die here. We're not taking our faith from Jesus. It's too late. It's too late. No, no, none else apart from Jesus. So this faith that we have, that God has given to us to exercise in Jesus, that makes us world overcomer, regardless of the condition or the circumstance, regardless of the issue, we stay with it. We stay with this faith in Jesus. Knowing this, that the trial of your faith, that is just what is going on. That is what is going on. He said to fight the good fight of faith. Woo! I feel this thing in my spirit. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse, verse 12, Paul said to Timothy, he said, fight the good fight of faith. That is the life we have come into. It's a life of faith. It's a fight of faith. It's not a fight of dreams. It's not a fight of prophecy. It's not a fight of uh, 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 um, uh, who knows me or who does not know me. It's a fight, the good fight of faith. It's a fight of faith. Woo! Radeda Sotabara. Now that it looks as if the thing is difficult, keep fighting the fight of faith. Maintain your cause. That's the revelation of the New Testament. He said, God puts everybody right with himself from beginning to the end by faith. For the just shall live by faith. Until you see your change 
Maintain your course. Keep your faith. Don't let the devil, oh, the devil is all, all out to lie to you that Jesus will not come through. He is a liar. The devil is a liar. If death could not stop Jesus from resurrecting, he said, he said, bring down this temple and I promise you in three days I will build it up back again. And he fulfilled it. Three days, Jesus resurrected. Three days, Almighty God came back to life. Woo! Death and grave were conquered by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. If Jesus could do that, what do you think that is your condition or challenge that it cannot be done? Oh boy. You know, let me just tell you. Eh? <laughs> I wish I had time. Glory be to God. I wish I had time. Look, let me tell you. This is very important. He said it is for freedom you were called. That's why you, God called you to come and be born again. Not for religious activities, for freedom. So, whether you do night video or not, whether you do fasting or not, you know, you are okay. <laughs> live, learn to live by faith and not by your feelings. That is the truth of the life and the provision of the New Testament. The Lord bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I know you've been blessed. You know, if God permits, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we will bring part two of this teaching. Because we want to help you to come into this life, to live this life experientially. You know, as we begin to grow in this New Testament, in this provision of the life that we have in Christ Jesus, by the provision of his blood, you will see we will run the devil out of the earth. When Jesus will come back, it will be to a glorious church. <laughs> not a timid church. Not a church that is crying. Hey, oh, where are you? Father, I die. No, we've left that part. Glory be to God. Now, let me give you an opportunity because we do not end our broadcast without giving everybody opportunity to give. Well, I want to ask you to support us financially because to go on air is very expensive and to push this gospel is very expensive. Be a part of it. Let God use you to be a financial blessing to us, even right now. The Bible says when a man has taught you the word of God, he says you should minister back your finances to him. So wherever you are, you can use any one of our account numbers. You know, uh, <clears throat> we have GT Bank. It's called Guarantee Trust Bank in Nigeria. Guarantee Trust Bank in Nigeria. And the number is 001-686-4121. 001-686-4121. And then Access Bank Nigeria is four one sorry Access Bank Nigeria is one four three 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 seven three five seven four Access Bank Nigeria one four three 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 seven three five seven four Father I pray for everyone that is giving by faith even those that don't have but they are giving out of the little they have I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that financially the Lord smile on you the Lord empower you. Make his grace available to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Therefore, I take authority over every work of the devil. He said, for this purpose, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, was manifest that he may undo the works of the devil. Every activity of the devil concerning you, your family, your job, your business, whatever it is that is your interest, I rebuke that devil in the name of Jesus. And I command that work, the works of the devil concerning you, to be reversed. In Jesus' name. It is written that you are blessed. So as a servant of God, I pronounce you blessed. You are blessed. In the name of Jesus. The Lord ministered fresh grace. Make his grace available to you. I release you and I send you forth. Go and live a life of victory. In the name of Jesus. From now on, every one of your effort, I bless it with positive results. In Jesus' precious name. I love you and God bless you until I see you on the next broadcast. This is AVJ, Apostle Victor James. And guess what I'm about to do? I am signing out. God bless you. Bye-bye.